Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to a very special edition of the PW Torch Fireside Chat here on YouTube. I'm PW Torch Assistant Editor Zach Haydorn, and with me today, Impact World Champion Josh Alexander. Josh, a pleasure to uh, to have you on the show on a on what is a big day for you. Yeah, it is a rather big day. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for having me, though. So talk about that. I want to talk about like 257 days as the Impact World Champion, longest you know, world title reign um, in the company's history, you know, guys that you've passed uh, Bobby Roode, AJ Styles, Sting, like some really top tip top tier talents um, in impact wrestling. And and your name is now at the top of that list. Talk about the kind of just your personal feeling about that, but also like what sort of responsibility comes with holding the title for as long as you have at this point? Well, like uh, I get, kind of dogged on every once in a while for being like my humility in these situations but that's because i try to always put myself in the 12 year old kid shoes that was watching okay. <laughs> wrestling growing up when any of these things occur you know what i mean so it's all unbelievable to me because as a 12 year old i never imagined i could be a pro wrestler yeah. let alone sitting where i'm sitting now as like you said the longest reigning impact champion of all time and to surpass people like bobby Roode, aj styles sting john morrison all these other people like <clears throat> These are people that I watched as a fan before I ever got into pro wrestling. These are people that inspired me to love wrestling, if not pursue wrestling. So to be on the list, you know, in the history books, you know, talk about legacy or whatever it is for me, you know, surpassing them and having the longest reign ever. It's, uh, it's a, it's, yeah, it's just surreal and unbelievable. And, uh, you know, I, I'm definitely stopping and, you know, smelling the roses today and being proud of myself for what I've done to get here because it's been, you know, an insane amount of hard work. I don't think people understand the kind of hard work that goes into being a pro wrestler, especially at this level. Yeah. And like you said, the responsibility that comes with being world champion and, you know, impact has touted me as being the face of the company since I won this championship of rebellion last year. And there's so much responsibility that comes with that, that I never even, you know, considered because, you know, for me, bell to bell, for the matches and stuff like that. I love the pressure. I love going out there in the main event after, you know, countless, you know, match of the night contenders that, mm -hmm. you know, our locker room produces on these pay-per-views and stuff like that. And having to like go in there with Shelly right after uh, Mia Yim and Jordan Grace just tore the house down and being like, man, yep. can we top that? I, I love that pressure because it's, it's where you get the juice out of this stuff. You know, if, if it was just a wrestling match, you didn't care about that stuff, then where's the pressure. But uh, yeah, right for me the responsibility and the pressure really comes with being the face of the company being somebody that is an ambassador for impact wrestling it's also something that comes easy because i've been a fan since that very first pay-per-view on june 19th 2002 and this is really what inspired me to you know even consider i could be a pro wrestler with seeing guys like aj styles and low-key and jerry lynn and all these people get in the wrestling ring and do a different style of pro wrestling than i ever saw but like I just want to do right by not just the company that took a chance on me and gave me a visa and signed me after 14 years of grinding, but also for this impact family in this locker room, because I, I love everybody in this company. This is why I resigned here. I, I want this company to grow and I want to grow with it. And if, you know, I, I get to do that as world champion, as the face of the company, it's a tremendous amount of responsibility, but I embrace it. Yeah. What is, what is stopping and kind of smelling the roses and appreciating your work look like with, the the grind not going away anytime soon like what 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 do you do to like take a step back and go huh i've just had a hell of a damn run it, it's really just you know uh, everything is business as usual i still woke okay. up first thing in the morning went to the gym did my morning cardio and all that stuff i'll be going to the gym after i do my media obligations later this afternoon okay. you know it, that can't stop because i'm still champion i still gotta go out there and be the very best i can be every single time anybody sees me there's, there's pressure involved with that, but uh, the stopping and smelling the roses, just really sitting down with my wife this morning, drinking our coffee and being like, cool. you know, when I met her, I was retired because I had two neck surgeries and I didn't know if I'd be able to come back. And she was really the one that kind of pushed me into, you know, coming back and stuff like that. So now to be now near seven years later from when we first started dating to now sitting here, you know, providing for my family as a professional wrestler, doing something I never thought possible. You know, that's, that's where I smell the roses. I share all those moments with her. Great. Do you, so you talked about like kind of the, um, the hard work, you know, that goes into to being a pro wrestler that people maybe don't see. I mean, I'm assuming you, you talk a lot about or, or 
it's the road and it's stuff like this. And it's, you know, can you eat right? Can you see family? Like that kind of thing. But, you know, I think it'd be interesting to give our audience just, if you can, just insight as to like what, what that hard work really looks like or what, it, you know, what, what's around it that, um, that, that, that is difficult, but that's something that you can navigate because you enjoy being a pro wrestler so much. Yeah. And like, it, it, it's everything that it takes to get signed in the first place. Like for me, it took 14 years and there was a lot of ups and downs and a lot of like roadblocks in the way. And it takes being persistent and just having this obsession and, you know, love for pro wrestling. You can't, you can't get into this with the sole goal of being rich and famous. You can't, you can't do that because I've seen thousands, like if not tens of thousands of people come in with that dream. And I, I think it's great. It's a great motivating thing, but the second they get any kind of roadblock or hip, hiccup right. along the way, they just drop and give up. You know what I mean? And that's where the persistence comes in. This is, this is my passion. This is my love. This is the only thing I ever thought I was good at. And, uh, you know, so I've been ruthlessly obsessed with it and that's missing every, you know, family event on weekends. Cause you're at wrestling sure. shows. I've, I've never been to a concert because guess what? Concerts happen on weekends. And right. Wow. <laughs> I, 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 like I've, I've lived this life where I've just always sacrificed everything for pro wrestling. And, uh, you know, in addition to all that, it's like you said, it's, it's getting in the gym, trying to make yourself the very best person, professional wrestler you can be, you know, aesthetically. And then it's also, you know, eating right and, you know, going over to family dinners and packing your own meals and telling them you can't eat their food. And <laughs> yeah. for somebody, for somebody like me, who's married, like my, all my in-laws are Chinese and they're big on family, which is amazing. But when I go over for dinners, man, they're big on food. And I sure. have to, it's a very weird conversation to have for the very first, first few times where you have to tell them, no, I have to eat this, this, and this, and only this. I can't try that. Even though I know you work it's all day, like cooking it to and stuff sure. like that. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's a lot of yeah. disappointing letdowns for people, but it's just, it's what you have to do. If you really want to be successful at this, like, I don't care who you are. You could be the most naturally gifted talent in the world, like a Will Ospreay, but that guy still has to work his ass off to be as good as he is. And I, I think that's one thing that a lot of people underestimate that goes into this. Yeah. Um, so do you, um, as the face of, the, of Impact Wrestling, you said that's a big, obviously a big responsibility. Is Has your attitude or perception of that role changed from like day one of your title reign to, to now? Like, is it, I mean, is it something that evolves along the way where like you start off like, okay, you're the world champion, but now you're 257 days in and like, it's kind of, you know, I, I think you could adopt that attitude of like, hey, this is my, this is my company. Like we, we go as I go. Is that, how, how has that perception changed for you as far as day one to day 257? Well, at the start, man, there's a lot of doubt involved with it. You go in your yeah. first media tours and stuff like that. And you have no idea what you're doing. It's like, you're getting thrown in the deep end and you're just going to see if you can swim. And if you can't swim, then guess what? That's dropping the ball too. Like right. it, it's not just these wrestling matches where you need to go in there and produce where I have the utmost confidence in my abilities, no matter who I'm in the ring with. Like that's something I've worked on for, you know, the past nearly 18 sure, years. Sure, sure. But this new thing of being the face of a company and representing a locker room and everybody else and everybody depending on you, that that's come in the last 257 days for me. And that's that's kind of evolved along the way where, you know, at the start, there's a lot of pressure and there's a lot of nerves and now it's just kind of secondhand. Like, yes, this is my job. This is what I do. And like, luckily I I'm well-versed in the history of impact wrestling has been such a big band forever that, right. you know, a lot of that comes easy to me. And uh, you know, I just have such a love for this place that uh, I want it to succeed as much, if not more than everybody else. So it's something that I embrace and I enjoy doing. And uh Yeah. We'll, we'll see when the eventually I'll lose this championship and that, that, that torch will be passed to somebody else and hopefully they can carry it like I did. Hopefully I made everybody proud. Well, yeah, we certainly put in a good, uh, you know, a good face forward on it. I, I, I think, you know, the, you, the, the matches themselves, you talk about that almost like with, without saying it, I feel like you're kind of saying the matches are the easy part, you know, like it's the part you enjoy most. And, and what, like you said, you've got the experience there have like have you grown at all like in the ring you know throughout this period as champion i mean you i'm assuming like you're kind of you're having different kinds of matches as champion than you would or like even like your role in those matches are a little bit different as the defending champion as opposed to 
chasing chasing the title. So like talk a bit about how like constructing your matches is a little bit different as champion and just your work in the ring has it changed, you know, now that you're holding the belt. I, I think it's changed. I think I've evolved. I think like I think we're all constantly learning as pro wrestlers. We're all we're always getting better if we're trying to get better. And that's something that I've always tried to do. I've always tried to remain incredibly humble and not have this attitude like, yes, I'm the champion. I know everything. I'm the very best at all times. Because I, I think, you know, no matter who you are, you can always get better. I've tried to always keep that kind of mindset. And I think I certainly, you know, feel like I've leveled up as a professional wrestler over these last year, this last near year, because every match I've been put in it's there's an extreme amount of pressure from the first title defense against Ishii at uh I can't remember the show it, it was in May but um you know that that was just like a go out there with this guy that like, someone who I idolized and go out and steal the show but then there's the 20 year anniversary of Impact Wrestling at Slammiversary with Eric Young which mm -hmm. is a completely different style of match to put together and try to tell a story not just to have the best match we can have but also tip our caps to the history of the 20 years of this company that we both loved and right. you know it just snowballs from there the pressure keeps growing and growing because every single time I go out there the longer this reign goes especially as a babyface champion people are waiting on me to lose and the one thing that, you know, as a representative of this company and somebody that wants to see the company grow, the one thing I've really tried to do this past year is no matter who I'm in the ring with, I try to elevate them at the same time. Because if I have good matches with people, that's fine. But if I just steamroll them, then I'm not making anything out of our roster for the future. You know what I mean? And that's why yeah. the Mike Bailey match was so special because that's a title defense. But I, I think even in a loss, Mike Bailey came into that match, you know, with way more stock than he went into it with because he not only like say he hung with the champion for 59 minutes and 50 seconds or whatever, but to put on a match that special, that's memorable and that people are never going to forget and stuff like that, that raises his stock in the company. So now moving forward, you know, we'll have one more superstar that can, you know, go out there and have a little bit more value. And I've tried to do that throughout this entire run. And, uh, you know, it's going to be a little different and hard to kill because I won't be doing that. But <laughs> um, uh, yeah, that that's one thing I've tried to take a lot of pride in this year. Um, so I definitely want to get to hard to kill in, in a second, but you brought Mike Bailey. Um, that match was, I mean, pretty, pretty incredible. Like the way you guys, like it just seemed to me, you guys had just really smooth chemistry together and just everything clicked, you know, planning a 59 minute match. I mean, what what goes into something like that? Like, I mean, it's not something you can. I mean, you can't remember an hour's worth of spots. I'm assuming, right? So it's you got to call some stuff out there. How, I mean, how do you go about saying, okay, well, we've got 59 minutes. What? How do you fill that time? Uh, well, you're absolutely right. You cannot plan a six. Uh, I mean, I can't. Maybe somebody can, but I really don't think it's possible for anybody to plan a full 60 minute match and like, execute it perfectly to the point where you're not just being a pro wrestler. I think those matches are the most challenging because you need to rely on your ability to just be a pro wrestler, and react mm -hmm. in the moment and try to make it entertaining. Um, the one thing with Mike Bailey, like from the moment he got signed, I said that he's going to be something special. And anybody that ever asked about me, I said, the second they put us in the ring together, that's going to be something memorable. And luckily, you know, that first matchup we had in Impact Wrestling, it, it was absolutely that. It was voted match of the year and all this stuff. But uh, the one thing that me and Bailey have, and the one thing that I have chemistry with, like anybody with, is that I go out there and I leave it all in the ring. If you have that same attitude, no matter who you are, I'm going to have chemistry with you out there. And Mike Bailey, we both think about pro wrestling pretty similarly. Uh, we both love this so much. We both want to exceed everybody's expectations at all times. So when we're in the ring there, like there's moments where I, I'm not going to say it gets real, but it, it gets pretty close to real where you're really gutting it out and fighting it out. And you just have to remember at the end of the day, what story you're trying to tell throughout that match. And in that one, it was really just like both of us gutting it out at the point where yeah. so much had been taken out of us. My shoulder was wrecked from the Kazarian match that's a complete shoot. My shoulder was completely wrecked from the okay. evening before when we taped that. And then him selling his knees and stuff like that throughout the entire match. I think it's just a progressive story that you tell for the fans to be immersed in it. And you just hope that they pick up on all that stuff and you execute it right. And, you know, luckily we did that night. You sure did. You sure did. So hard to kill uh, January 13th. You're defending your um, Impact World Championship against Bully Ray. Bit of a different um, opponent. I mean, he certainly has the, you know, cachet and, legacy appeal of impact wrestling there's a lot of a lot of history there um you know yeah also a different type of opponent too like from an in-ring perspective 
what's your mindset going into a, you know a pay per view match like that with with him? It's a longer term story that you guys have been working through since since October. You know what what's on your mind ahead of working a match like that with a, a, a different opponent at play? Well, I think all the pieces have been set with the story and everything like that to make everybody kind of you know to get everybody invested in the match at the very mm-hmm. least. And, you know, like you said, it's going to be a different style of match, different kind of opponent. Uh, Bully has made his entire career on being the, you know, whatever the perfectionist of tables, ladders, and chairs and all this stuff. He has made his career being good at that stuff and using that stuff. Me, I am known as the wrestling machine or wrestler's wrestler. I have not used any of that stuff ever in impact wrestling and hardly ever throughout my entire career. So it's going to be a different kind of uh, environment for me. I'm going to get a chance to show everybody that, you know, there's a different side of me, a little bit more violent, a little bit more, uh, you know, extreme might I say, but uh, (laughs) (laughs) you know, I I'm excited for the opportunity to show somebody. So show some of these fans something different than they've ever seen out of me, because I think a lot of times, especially now in wrestling, you get kind of pigeonholed into your categories. Like this guy's a technical wrestler. This guy's a brawler. This guy's a talker. This is, this guy's this. And I I believe I can check every single box in pro wrestling. And I'm excited to show everybody that at hard to kill. Is the, uh, do you prepare any differently for a match like this? The full metal mayhem tables, letters, chairs, like, do you, I mean, can you prep for, you know, a, ch- a few chair shots to the back? <laughs> no, no, I don't, I don't think you can. I, I think, uh, like those things suck. Uh, I, I think they suck way more than fans think they do when they watch it on television and stuff <laughs> like that. Um, I, I know I'm going to have bumps and bruises. I know I'll probably be bleeding, which is nothing new for me. And, you know, I do that in regular wrestling matches seemingly every time I step foot in the ring for some reason, but, uh, you know, uh, I'm ready for all the physical challenges that are involved and the uh, the mental challenges that are involved in it. Uh, I'm just excited to get in the ring with somebody like Bully, who, like I said, he, you know, he's been around forever. He has a long storied career at Impact Wrestling and all throughout the wrestling world. He's a two time Hall of Famer. This is my chance to show I can hang with a guy like that and hopefully, you know, defeat him and continue my reign as Impact Champion. Absolutely, Josh. Thank you very much. Congrats on your success and uh, of 2022. And the last 257 days, a heck of a run. And January 13th, hard to kill uh, on pay-per-view. Josh Alexander versus Bully Ray for the Impact World Championship. Full metal mayhem rules, tables, ladders, chairs, and a lot more. Um, Josh, really appreciate the time. We'll make, uh, make sure to do this again soon. And congrats again. Yeah, absolutely. Anytime. Thank you.